Hello everyone, my name's Tris and this is Double O'Neill. This episode, I'm going to talk to you about a wonderful coach that I was sent. The coach started out as a triangle model and looking at it, I thought, what am I going to do with it and why was I sent it? So, here it is. Dave from Bunter's Yard is trying to raise some money for Prostate Cancer UK and we are working on a wonderful project called the Great British Coach Build. And with that, we've all been tasked, and that when I say all of us, and there are a number of YouTubers and Instagrammers, we have been tasked with doing something with it. It is up to us what we do, and I'm wondering. So, looking at this, we get it open and just try and get some inspiration. It is a trying model, like I said, and it is the one which you'll be able to pick up your luggage and drop it off. And I'm sure a number of you who are possibly slightly older than me um, would have enjoyed these when you were younger. And seeing it now, it's a beautiful little model, but I'm afraid I will be doing some work on it. It's got all the working mechanism on it and it's in pretty good condition. So I'm really pleased with it because I did wonder what I'd be sent. The others would be sent other items. But looking at this a little bit more, I had a look inside one of my triangle books and you can look at some of the kind of it's not memorabilia but the bits that came out for it when it was released and there's some really nice graphics that went on when you have a look at this you've obviously got the two types you've got the one that's a bit more continental the large one and then the smaller one like I have here and it comes in the red plastic color but you can see on the mechanism in these pictures and it's nice it'd be nice to have some of these hand-drawn things now but I can see why they don't do it here it is where it came in its set which I can imagine if you're a youngster and that turned up, oh, you'd be so pleased with that. It just looks so nicely packaged. And then obviously you've got the different liveries there, all in the different shades of red and brown. So fine. I always wonder if there was anything more. But for me, I do wonder what I will do. Again, there's lots of articles out there and this is a bit that went out to try and help sell the product. So I just thought, fantastic. And hit pause if you need to read a bit more of this. But I thought I'd drop a few bits on and then we can get into it. But I don't know, that just looks really attractive to me and I think some wonderful work that they did on trying to advertise it. So what should I do? Oh, I'm a great western guy and I like doing great western things and on the starting clip you would have seen the coach going past and it was this, obviously a Royal Mail um, coach, quite simply done. And so I'd like to make it look like that. Well I did, you can see, but I'm going to show you how we did it. Firstly. I want to give it a brush off. It's got obviously not a lot of grime on it. It's in pretty good condition. You probably wouldn't do this, but because I'm going to want to paint this, I don't want to be painting over the top of dust. I would like it to be a scenario where someone gets it, they look at it, and think this is fantastic, pristine model. Because that's what's going to happen. Someone is going to get hold of this. We're going to be sending these back to Dave at Bunter's Yard. And if you go on my Instagram and his Instagram, you'll be able to follow a way of actually being able to buy this. And in aid of um, generating money for Prostate Cancer UK, these are going to be going on auction and you'll be able to bid on it. So that's going to be, I don't know, I think pretty fantastic if we can raise a bit of money for charity. So I'm trying to do my best job at doing a nice great western chocolate and cream on the side of here and I'll be putting Royal Mail back on the sides. So I mean scrubbing off these Royal Mail bits with my little sponge kind of file. It's quite nice, it's soft, it doesn't dig in. Um, I picked these up from my model shop, I can't remember where, I've had them for ages. But they're nice, they clean it off. And after that, I give it a good scrub um, in some hot water. Obviously, the metal parts will have to dry out nicely, otherwise they're going to go rusty and clean the roof, just to make sure there's nothing on there. And also, I've been sanding it, so there will be some dust. So that's one thing that um, we need to make sure we don't have on there. So just give it a rinse, but just make sure everything dries nicely, because there are some what looks like some steel parts on there. But once it's dry, I want to take off the wheels, not too difficult. They're kind of two part plastic wheels with a metal rod in between. Take it off because I want to put some more modern ones on. So they roll really nicely. So whoever gets this can use it with modern rolling stock. Well, that's my plan anyway. I've got these brass bushes that go and represent the axle bearings. Well, they are the axle bearings. And basically, you just got to check the fit. So if you ever do this to one of your old ones, see how 
narrow than it makes it for the span of the axles to fit in. For this it was a bit too much so filing it down nice and simple just working it until it's the right size and then test fit it with an axle and just make sure it's okay. These I guess are designed for I guess some, maybe some more modern applications. This model is very very old and so yeah it's, it's going to be slightly different to what these are designed for but I'm sure there might be something out there already that you could do this nice and quickly. Anyway I glue it on in my pot I put some thick super glue I put it on the back of that axle bush and then stick in it. Just make sure it's sitting so it's pointing out nice and perpendicular. It's hard to tell really. It's got that V shape in it to pick up the axle, the cone and that's that. So really just put each one in um, and then the idea would be then to fit some wheels. Um, the wheels that I've actually fitted here to begin with are some Daypole spoked wheels which look all nice but I realised that I'm, I'm not really keen on the spoked and then I look, look a little bit more um, and I made a different decision which I'll go through in a second but just making sure that they spin freely that's quite important these spin better than some of the ones that I've got some of my other models so then I went from the spoke to a dish drill these are some of the Backman um, dish wheels I picked them up you can get a pack of I think it's 10 for actually more than you think I can't remember if it's like 16 pounds 15 pounds but they last you a little bit of time if you don't have a, a home for them straight away but these go on I think they look a bit nicer so I've done one bogey there and then I'll be moving over to the other bogey and I think they look smart uh, I did did think about painting them black but with the way that the dark nickel color it looks nice but just make sure all of them spin freely I'm happy so that means I'll have a nice model that will roll around rails very very well after that I want to use my masking tape to mask off the black area. I don't want to go and coat this with the cream colour because then I'll have a lot of work trying to make it black again. Though I will be painting it black because uh, at the moment I've got the plastic colour. And I just do enough just to protect it. You know I don't have to mask every little bit off because anything that's over spray can be touched up reasonably easily. It's just taking away that extra unneeded work. With that done, I want to put on some primer. Primer is very important, it makes paint stick. So it's kind of that etching layer that kind of hooks onto your plastic surface or metal or whatever it is. And then you're going to come later with another colour and you're going to paint that on. The one thing that's really important, I've been learning more and more over the years, is try and make sure your primer goes on reasonably thin at the same time so you don't lose detail at the beginning you're going to keep losing detail the more and more paint that goes on so I try and be really careful and just put the bare minimum on and make sure I've got good coverage of everything so that's both sides to be done and I'm not going to do the ends because they're going to be black anyway I'm just going to touch them up with black afterwards I think the ends are the only painted parts on this as well as the I uh, had the Royal Mail bits that were on there before but they were quite they kind of stuck out a bit so I don't know how they were done originally but it was, it was like there was a bit of surface to them when you touch them. Just make sure I get some of the other areas that will end up getting painted black anyway. Kind of dust some paint in there. So I've got something for the paint to stick on too. There's something about this that makes me want to go buy the original set and so I can have some fun with it. But that's for another day. After that I want to primer the roof. Nice and simple. Let's get the paint on there ready for some grey later. Now just making sure the paint's flowing nicely, I'm going to put the lovely cream colour on. Honestly, it's really nice colour. This is from Rail Match, this one. It's just their um, stock cream colour for Great Western Railway. And yeah, it looks lovely. You can see it in the paint pot there. The the colour is what I've, well, I've not used it before, is what I want to say. And so it's nice to use it. And I want to do some more coaches because I've never painted a coach before. Just putting it out there. I don't believe I have. And so I'm a bit intimidated by this whole thing, but it's nice to do it. So my video isn't necessarily a how and to, but it's kind of how I did it. You see my masking tape has dropped down there a little bit as well, can't you? But it just makes you work it into the little areas, so you don't have to come back later and work it in. I did three layers of this in total, um, waited for it to go hard, and then do the next layer, wait for it to go hard. And hard, I don't mean as in like leave it for an hour, and it seems like it's hard but no give it a good 24 hours I find because the rail match stuff I find it just takes that a little bit longer to dry but fine after that I start putting my grey on the roof and <laughs> back to the colour that it was before 
but now it's a painted roof and there's something a little bit nice about when you see it painted opposed to the plastic color which has got that kind of plasticky sheen on top which isn't always as nice so i work that area and yeah it comes out well just try not to do too much paint because you'll find that you'll get well just some running which isn't good so i kind of keep an eye on it if it starts going shiny in an area don't go back over that area i just start getting rid of the matted areas in the other ones so I try and make it so it's got a consistent coat of paint over the top of it. After that, get my masking tape and I mask off all the important areas because we're going to be coming in with our chocolate colour, which I'm looking forward to because well, there's two parts to this paint job and that's the other main colour. Just making sure that where you've got details, you kind of run your finger now so then it tucks into those little kind of lumps and creases and things like that. So that's kind of something that you need to pay attention to. One thing that I was worried about with this is getting bleed. So when I paint my chocolate, will it go up onto the cream? And then I've got loads of repair work to do. I don't know how good this masking tape is. It's the Tamiya masking tape. And, but, you know, I, I think it'll be okay. Anyway, I'll work the paint over it. I don't go crazy. I just keep dusting it. So I start creating a bit of a layer and work my way up to the next bit. This is by Vallejo. It's a mahogany color that they've got. I think it's a little bit light, but personally, I think it looks really nice on there. Some of the Great Western coaches that I have have a slightly darker tone to this. So maybe I find a slightly darker tone or maybe it's absolutely fine. side done I repeat on the other side nice and simple get the airbrush out make sure the paint's flowing nicely and then get it on make sure you get all the area Now it's time to take off the mask and I was worried that once I pulled the masks off that I'd have bleed showing underneath and peeling it out of the way came out really nicely. It kind of gives you a bit of confidence when you see that doesn't it? After that I just need to use some thin coats of black paint on the ends. I did a couple of coats and so I had a nice uniform black and you couldn't see brush strokes or anything showing slightly thicker less thin down kind of doing all the frame down here and just making sure i cover everything without getting the brown area because that'd be a disaster if that happens well i can always wash it off or whatever but it's added work that isn't always needed so we'll try and avoid that then there's the netting which will be catching the the post as it goes past it kind of needs to be black in my view i think obviously you'd have it looking differently if you made a modern approach of this but with this it's just everything's black on here i did two coats on this so i started one thinner and then you go back over later and then there's the details here for the doors i guess as part of them opening everything just coat them the best that i can and try and get all the little details after that one area that i did wonder what to do because looks like there's the wooden color that's on the door frames or the window frames sorry not the door frames and I end up picking a burnt red colour from Vallejo. I think it's just called burnt red. And it turned out quite nice. I was quite happy with this colour. Because I was having a look at some of my Backman and Hornby coaches. And looking at the colour. And it's got that kind of burnt red colour to it. I guess it might be resembling some form of wood. That's got that kind of reddish colour to it anyway. So pretty satisfied with that. And couldn't complain. After I did the initial bit of the frame. I kind of work down the sides of it to finish it off um, i was a little bit intimidated that i'd get some of the the red onto well the cream color and 
again, be hard to kind of get it off. But I think that looks nice. Um, what I wanted to do was put a case of assassin varnish just over it to seal it off. So then any handling, it will then stop me putting a, a fingerprint onto the cream. Let that go hard and then it should be good. Then using some black paint, I paint the where the light shroud is, just paint it black. And I'll come back in a minute and paint the centre white. But whilst that's drying, I paint a little gold line, which you can barely see. I can't even really see it now, but I spent ages painting a bit of gold down the centre strip. After that, I come back in with my whites. And I don't want it just to be whites. I'm going to add in some kind of lighter shades of grey in there. But you need to just kind of try and work the dome shape of the light to see you've got enough on there. I was kind of just really just trying to be careful not to get anywhere. And then I come with my grey to try and make it look like it's got a bit of shadow to a light bulb. Because whenever you see a bulb, it's, yeah, it doesn't look white, does it? Um, it looks slightly different to that anyway. So once that's done, I then decided to kind of, yeah, work on the axles after that because I thought it looked nice. Let that dry for a moment. And I noticed on the Great Western locos, not locos, coaches, um, they have little blue bits in places. So I just thought I'd do that. That's on top of the spring kind of rod that's there and then we do the top of the axle boxes I, I don't know exactly why they're blue maybe it's an area that you have to lubricate and it's there for obvious reasons maybe someone in the comments below can tell me why these bits were blue but it really makes it pop so yeah really pleased to do that with that painted I just came back over with some gloss varnish and just do the light fitting so they have a bit of a sheen to them Later on I actually do another satin varnish and then I have to come back with a gloss varnish just to make them pop. But it kind of gives them that glassy look. Now I need to put the transfers on. So nice and simply I'm using the press fix transfers which I find are so easy to use. You literally trim them out, you kind of get them off that sheet and then you just lay them on, give them a rub um, just to make them sure they're pressed on. And that's kind of the main fundamental of it. After that, I use a, a paintbrush uh, with some water on it. So basically just dips them in. I've not flooded it, um, but basically once this is stuck on and I've rubbed it in place, um, you just get a wet brush, or it, it, it doesn't have to be a brush, um, be a cloth, whatever, and you go and touch the, the paper side of it. So you get the um, brush and just kind of wash over that area and just make sure yeah, you've, you've covered it, you've soaked in, otherwise if you don't do this properly, you end up peeling the whole lot back off and it could be a nightmare, but you have to make sure you've pressed it on really well. I thought I'd really make a point of talking about that. Um, but that's simple, and it's like that. And then once you've left it, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, maybe two minutes, I'm not sure, it depends. It varies, I find, um, on how soaked you've got it. Then, then this layer comes off, and you're left with this absolutely wonderful looking... Um, decal that's on there, transfer, whatever you want to call it, and it just looks great. And I'm really pleased with these. And at the moment, these are always out of stock. It's the HMRS um, press fix um, transfers. So if you look them up, you'll be able to find them. But I've not been able to find any more of the water slide ones lately. Maybe they're waiting for more to come in. But I really do honestly like these. So yeah, you should get some. They're great. Um, after that, I just kind of dab off the, the moisture that's been left over from it, and that's it. I've just got the Great Western Railway uh, GWR to kind of stick on the side there because that's what I do. And actually, the more and more I'm doing this, I'm thinking, I'd like this for myself, thank you very much. So uh, you never know, I might have to buy it back um, <laughs> when we do the bidding, um, or just do another one for myself because it looks kind of smart. Anyway, we get that one off just like before. It's nice and simple. Just dab that off with a bit of tissue. Just trying to make sure that actually haven't taken the transfer off with it. Now with that done, it's got, you know, we need to do the other side. But I get that done. It's nice and simple. Um, but I did get a visitor during this one. This is my cat Groot. Um, <laughs> he likes to see what I'm up to. And as you can see, he gets lifted off and out of the way. Now I've done both sides now and I'm happy with that. It's looking really smart. This is Royal Mail. It just looks good. 
So then I run the airbrush over with a satin varnish just to seal the transfer because sometimes you get edges that lift and things like that. It really does just hold all on nicely and just run over the whole model um, just to make sure that's all good. And I let that go hard. Nice and simple. Nothing special going on there. Now once it was dry, I want to reassemble it. The windows go back in. It's like a, a shell that goes in there. That's great. Um, I didn't really have to do any cleaning up on that one. It was just in lovely condition. And then we want to put that roof on. Um, there's a little screw that held it on originally. So I just have to make sure um, I do that properly. I need to put the roof on the right way around though. So I'll go and tuck that in place. Obviously I block it um, with my hand so you can't see it properly. But with that just sitting there, it looks really smart. So yeah, what do you think? Leave me a comment below. Um, but I think it's time uh, to maybe give this a run. But it looks beautiful, in my opinion. I'm honestly really pleased with it. And I'd like to maybe buy another one of them and, and go from there. Little view from the other side. A bit more plain on the other side. But it looks nice. Um, I think we should get one of these for ourselves. Well, for myself. Anyway, this again was for the Great British Coach build. I'm looking forward to seeing what all the others have done. I think they're going to be doing a fantastic job. But with it running on my father's layout, because my layout is currently in... It's not really a running layout at the moment. So here's that at the back of that train. It looks really smart. I've got my father's... Um, it was a white metal kit. Um, it was a 2800 um, Great Western Railway tender freight loco. Beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, really, really like it. Got a good bit of weight to it. But running it round, really, really pleased with it. And you can see a difference between the the coaches and the um, and, and of the Royal Mail bit of the colour of that brown. I'm a bit too well light on that colour. I've now got a haul pulling it round on that last one. It looks kind of smart. We're having trouble with the um, the 2800 with its um, what is the 28 class going around certain bits. Have some issues, so I went to the haul and it was looking really smart. Again, that's another kit built one that my dad had built. Um, based from a Triang chassis from what I understand um, but we did have a Triang chassis, he modernised the chassis and uh, painted the body, looked really smart there's a 28XX again, just looking great running around there so I hope you enjoy what you've seen here I hope that if you ever get the opportunity to repaint a coach or you get hold of a second hand one that you have a go at doing it yourself, you know just paint it, get some masking tape out and have a go it makes me want to do maybe some of the others that I've got. Maybe some ones that need cleaning up. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than this. I've done the easy route. I've not done much lining or anything like that. But it's quite satisfying just to have a go at least. So, yeah, that's fine. I just want to say a huge thank you to my channel members and my patrons. You've been an absolute help over the past couple of years now that I've had Patreon running with the channel. in it's one thing that helps me grow the channel even more so huge thank you to you if you'd like to be a patron or a channel member there'll be some links below uh, if you want to do that but follow me on instagram as well as dave at bunter's yard you'll be able to see how to get hold of this coach anyway you take care of yourselves don't work too hard and i'll see you next time bye